If you have stress in your life, you might have high cortisol too. And if you have high cortisol, it could be making you sick. In this video, I'm gonna show you five ways that you can lower cortisol levels using functional medicine. So keep watching. It's useful to think of cortisol, the body's chronic stress hormone, as our frenemy. Because when cortisol is balanced and being produced at appropriate times and amounts, it's our friend. Cortisol activates our immune system. It plays an important role in the sleep cycle and it quenches inflammation, at least in the short term. It keeps us alive and kicking by regulating our blood sugar to fuel our cells. And it stores any extra fuel, also known as glucose, as fat. See where I'm going with this? That's right. When cortisol stays too high for too long, it raises blood glucose. It keeps you in fat storage mode instead of fat loss mode, and it blocks the calming and helpful progesterone that can lead to estrogen dominance. Over time, it makes a mess of our immune systems, your circadian rhythm, and your metabolism. Not to mention, chronically high cortisol causes symptoms of anxiety and depression, chronic fatigue and pain, heart palpitations, stress hives, and general misery. At high levels, cortisol is most definitely the enemy. Because so many of us have chronic, unavoidable stress in our lives, high cortisol is an all too common root cause for frustrating symptoms like these. And remember, it's not just mental and emotional stress that triggers the release of cortisol. Physical stressors like infections, autoimmunity, hormone imbalance, etc., can raise it too. So, how do we lower cortisol to more friendly levels? Here are five science-based functional medicine strategies to do just that. Number one, eat protein healthy fats, and fiber. Since cortisol is released in response to blood sugar spikes and crashes, eating foods that encourage steady blood sugar levels helps to reduce cortisol. Protein, healthy fats, and fiber act as extended release nutrition by slowing the breakdown and absorption of fuel, leveling out those spikes and crashes that are caused by things like processed carbs and sugary foods. This means less demand for insulin, and therefore less demand for cortisol. Number two, reduce caffeine intake. When cortisol is poorly balanced and chronic stress is high, energy levels tend to suffer. Morning grogginess, general fatigue, and difficulty concentrating can all be symptoms of high cortisol which makes it easy to reach for that cup of coffee or other caffeinated beverages just to get through the day. But caffeine directly causes adrenal cells to make more cortisol, as well as other stress hormones, which creates a cycle of physical chronic stress and dependence on caffeine. Reducing your intake or cutting it out altogether, at least for a time, does help break that cortisol spiral. Number three, add high quality fish oil to your diet. Omega-3 fatty acids have many important roles in the body and the brain. Fish oil has been shown to lower cortisol, reduce overall inflammation, and help support healthy neurotransmitter function, neurotransmitters being the happy hormones in your brain. Be careful about sourcing on this, both for fatty fish that you eat and fish oil supplements, as toxins and heavy metals tend to accumulate in fat. You can find my favorite fish oil supplements in the show notes. Number four, replenish stress-specific vitamins. So chronic stress and elevated cortisol can actually lead to depletion of key vitamins and minerals. Basically, you're burning through them faster than you can take them in through your food alone. I find suboptimal levels of many different vitamins in my client's lab work. Excess stress can cause you to excrete magnesium, leading to problems with bone density, muscle tension, 
headaches, anxiety, and sleep problems. Stress can also deplete several B vitamins, which can lead to neurologic symptoms, low energy, and hormone dysfunction again. Are you suspicious that you have lower than functional levels of stress-specific vitamins? Unfortunately, most doctors don't or won't test for these, but that testing is surprisingly accessible, and I use it all the time with my one-on-one -on -one consultation clients. To learn more about working with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can check out the link in the show notes. And last, but certainly not least, number five is try adaptogens. Yep, it's what it sounds like. These plants help your body adapt to stress using many different biochemical pathways, including lowering cortisol levels. Panax ginseng is a well-established cortisol manager with many studies in support of its use. Ashwagandha is one of the most common and most famous adaptogens, not only calming, but also energizing. Rhodiola doesn't work directly on cortisol. Instead, it acts upstream on the brain to improve mental function, decrease overwhelm, and lower high perception of stress. I love adaptogens and I use them all the time, but they can be tricky. I mean, you have to use the correct part of the plant at the correct concentration with the correct extraction technique and the correct dose. You get the idea, right? So the quality of the nutraceutical really, really matters here. If you've tried these friendly herbs before and you did not get the results you wanted or expected, it might be worth trying a higher quality product or a blend for this reason. You can find my favorites in the show notes. The symptoms of high cortisol can be anywhere from a little annoying to downright scary, but there are proven steps you can take to improve your relationship with your frenemy cortisol. If you're into DIYing your health, check out my favorite strategies in the show notes, or if you'd like one less thing to figure out, you can apply for a one-on-one -on -one consultation and I'll help you make a plan that's best for your specific situation. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you found this information useful, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe to my channel. There's more functional medicine goodness where this came from. We'll see you again soon.